Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to give you guys some updates with the Cyclone Champion. Um, characters performing pretty well. We are level 86. Atlas progression is going pretty nice now, finally. Uh, unlocked all of our white tier maps. A little slow to start, but we're speeding up pretty well. Um, I want to first off talk about Uber Lab and the things that I've changed with this character, and then I'm going to jump right into a map and start showing you guys. If you want the other updates, feel free to check out the previous video. So for our Uber Lab, I was thinking of going Fortitude. I ended up going first to strike, last to fall, uh, mainly because of the Intimidate as a damage multiplier, and also because of the rare chance that Adrenaline procs and saves our life. Uh, this helps counteract some shotgunning mechanics. Shotgunning is basically getting hit multiple times in very quick succession. Um, since this makes it so if we drop below 33%, it will immediately heal us back up, give us Adrenaline, and cleanse all ailments, which is pretty nice. You can honestly take Fortitude uh, like either, and then just replace the Fortify gem with uh, a damage multiplier such as like uh, Close Combat or Rage would be two good ones. So currently using Impale, Pulverize, Cyclone, Fortify, and Brutality. Um, ended up finding this ring just literally 14 seconds ago. Really sick ring because of that flat fizz roll. Also got super lucky and got this awesome Maelstrom Knot, which is minus 7 mana cost. I got this from a Legion. You can see it's got the hybrid, uh, which gives the mana and minus mana cost. This puts our mana cost on Cyclone to 0, which means I don't literally use any mana. It's also nice because it allowed us to replace that Fizz Leech Jewel or Mana Leech Jewel with a um, basically just a damage life jewel. So we're sitting at just shy of 6k life. Uh, we do have this life cluster to grab. So with a belly, we can still hit over 7,000 life. Um, if you count like this is a 60 life roll, this is a 60 life roll, this is a 67 life roll. There's, there's still life to upgrade. This is a 70 life roll. No pristine delve crafts yet. Uh, I ended up specking into Adamant. I said I wasn't going to get this, but after realizing how insane Molten Shell and Vol Molten Shell are, it's pretty stupid. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna kind of show you guys in this demonstration video how insane Vol Molten Shell and Molten Shell are. Also, people are asking what my buffs were in the top. So just to show you, Inspirational. Inspirational is this node right here. Basically gives the 12% movement speed for anyone around me. Uh, including myself. Master of Metal is the Impale Stacks, which is this one. Um, Blood Stance, Flesh Stance, um, Flesh Stance linked with Maim, and then Dread Banner. So here is just a regular Phantasmagoria. The reason why I wanted to show it is because it's the double boss, and I know people can get spooked of the Phantasmagoria boss, uh, just because it does quite a bit of damage. So I'm going to intentionally take some hits from this boss to show you guys. Also decided to use Frost Blink instead of Dash because Frost Blink allows you to actually um, use it while you're cycloning, and you can also use it in midair uh, in Leap Slam, which is really cool for repositioning. Like if you jump a corner freak, like I'll see if I can give you an example. Like uh, you jump here and then Frost. Oh, that didn't work. Jump Frost. There we go. If you want some more movement speed on the character, you can run an Adrenaline Flask. Uh, it will make the build feel a lot better. I know a lot of people are asking to go a little bit quicker. I'm just playing a bit more defensive because it's hardcore. Oh, that's a Divine Shrine. Um, hmm, that's pretty weird. Well, I'll tell you what. This is a good example of how to use Vol Molten Shell. So I click Vol Molten Shell. And then if you see, if I stand still, you see the damage it's absorbing? That's, that's Vol Molten Shell. So now I'm just going to go click this and kill everything. But I don't want this Divine Shrine on. I don't need this thing, so it's okay. So the way Molten Shell and Vol Molten Shell work is they give you a bubble based off of your armor value. If you look at our character, we don't actually have that much armor. But the thing is, this Champion gives us a thousand armor whenever we Impale. And Champion also gives us a thousand armor while we have Fortify. This gives us a total of two thousand armor that we normally would not have playing another Ascendancy. That alone gives us a 3,700 Molten Shell bubble with the armor scaling just simply from our tree. And that can go up quite a bit more if I actually get armor on my gear. Um, but that's not the most important thing to really focus on. Um, since we already have so many like 
other defensive well layers that we want to focus on rather than just armor like mitigating elemental damage and getting more sustain as an example but if you look at my armor value I actually don't even have that much right I only have 16k um, and that's like without a granite you can easily hit 16k with a granite so pretty much any build could make use of this As for the legions, I stopped doing legions for a while, and then when I learned about Vol Molten Shell, I started doing legions again, because I feel very, very comfortable um, doing legions. The only time I probably won't do them is if I'm running a minus max multi-proj map. So here, I'm just going to press it. If you look at the top, I got an 11.5k bubble. Easy clap. Tank it all up, boys. Nice. Nice. I don't think I'm actually going to have Vol Molten Shell up for the boss, but it'll be okay. I'll just have regular Molten Shell. Pretty sure the boss is like right up here, that's why. So the ideal goal is to pretty much just spam your guard. Oh, it's already up again. Just kidding. The ideal goal would be to spam your guard since uh, we do spec into the reduced guard cooldown. Um, and it has like, what, like a 5 second uptime with like a 3 second downtime. Corrupted bloodline. Okay, so here's the bosses. Blink in. Alright, now here's my Vol Molten Shell. You can see it's soaking up the damage of the Double Doge Race. Pretty absurd at how crazy it is. The other cool thing is if you look at the duration, once the Vol Molten Shell runs out, I can actually chain it and hit regular Molten Shell. Because even though they're guard skills, they share a different cooldown. And I'm okay. I, I think that Vol Molten Shell probably needs to be nerfed a bit. But I don't want them to nerf the cooldown um, of the way that works. Mainly because it's really nice being able to put like, for example, cast wind damage taken Molten Shell. And then click your Vol Molten Shell because the, vols, the Vol one cannot be supported with the cast wind damage taken. Um, so I think that's really nice. So you can kind of have like semi-automation, but at the same time, you know, when you really need to use it, you can just click it. So for people who don't want the active Vol Molt or regular Molten Shell, you can just use a cast on damage taken. Uh, and that's really, really nice. Unlike the, unlike the just standard guard skill, uh, which, is, which is good for other scenarios. So to uh, continue along with what we're going to be doing with the character... Um, I'm going to be picking up two-point jewels. I tried jewel crafting, didn't really get super lucky. I'm pretty much just looking for uh, maximum life and any type of damage roll that I can get or even resistance. I was thinking I may drop these two pathing nodes and connect through here. Uh, the only reason to connect through here is because you get like 25 all res in armor and a little bit of movement speed. With this extra elemental res roll, I'm going to use this to get more chaos resist on my gear because my chaos res is pretty bad. Uh, that's why I'm running an Amethyst. Eventually, I'd like to replace the Amethyst with a Basalt, but I don't want to get a Basalt until I get a bit more speed or damage, maybe, so I can really keep up good uptime. I also just may not run it at all and just focus more so on the Molten Shell and Vol Molten Shell because it honestly takes care of pretty much most of the bosses for me. Um, but yeah, pretty much for the remainder of the build, we're 86, so coming up here and grabbing uh, Devotion... Grabbing the two-point jewel, maybe grabbing the three-point armor jewel, but probably not. Can get cleaving. Uh, cleaving is pretty good. Butchery is also pretty good. And that's pretty much the build, you know? Like I said, you're looking at around 7k. Uh, with a belly, you can probably get 7k with an astral, uh, like an elder astral. You can also get, like, a 7k plus with a comb's heart. Um, I do plan on getting this leech right now, but I don't really care too much about the leech at the moment because... Just the standard 20% leech has been enough for me with Blood Rage since, like I said, I'm playing entirely on the guard skills and it's a bit redundant having a ton of leech with the guard skills because you literally don't take damage with a guard up, right? Like you like you don't. The, I, so I had one instance where I took damage and like threw my guard, like actually took a hit. We did a double, it was a twinned double ghosted Malachi and I took two Malachi slams in the map. I don't know what fucking ghosts were in there and that did like... That did about 3,000 damage, but my Vol Molten Shell still had like 6,000 like HP left on it. 
Um, so in, in the instance of that, like I guess if you're doing big bosses, um, like maybe in red tier maps, I'll respec a little bit of damage and get this leech. But for now, nothing really chunks you except for Legion, I guess, and like the random damage instances, which I don't really want to rely on Leech. I'd rather like avoid the mechanics himself. Yep, that's pretty much the build though. As of right now, pretty happy with the character as a champion. Remember, if you don't want to play champion, you can play Slayer. If you don't want to play Slayer, you can play Glad. If you don't want to play Glad, you can play Berserker. If you don't want to play Berserker, you can play Juggernaut. Juggernaut's going to have the least damage of them all. You are going to have to get a bit of damage with Juggernaut, but damage is not really that hard to come by. This is like a 400 P DPS weapon, and you can go into red maps with a 6 link. Absolutely no problem. You can even do red maps with a 5 link. Your single target may be a little bit bad, um, but I mean, that's what you've got like Warchief and Vol Warchief to them that I literally don't even use. Um, you can also get an Impale Watcher's Eye for your Pride, which makes it also even stronger. So there's a lot of room for flexibility and damage upgrades. You can use a Star Forge, which has like 1.5 times the damage of this weapon, and you pretty much don't lose much. You just, you lose Onslaught, which kind of sucks, because I like Onslaught a lot right here. But you pretty much just replace this, and then you get like Razor's Edge and Blade Master. Um, I don't think I would get Blade Dancer, because that's too far away, and it's okay if you just lose one weapon range. There's like Betrayal Crafts for plus one we weapon range, so that's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, I'm actually kind of jealous that this is only like three and this is four. Or well, two and three. That kind of sucks because the two and two combined would put me here because I would be one point shorter and then I could get Butchery for an extra point. So fucking GGG, why are you nerfing axes? Axes are already strong anyway. But yep, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below or feel free to come on the live stream. Uh, just make sure you watch the video first, please, because a lot of people just ask redundant questions. Uh, but yeah, take care. See you guys tomorrow. Hope you guys are enjoying Cyclone as well. The League is a lot of fun. Take care, boys.